Now we're ready to go back up to that summation. We had td of j comma k here. Well, td of n comma x is in O of log n. Uh, so we ignore the x term. The x term over here is k. So we can cross this out and say that is O of log of j. So now what we've got is a summation of logs. Let's give ourselves a little extra room here. A summation of logs. Uh, so I'm going to treat that just as log of j, just to make it a little easier. k equals 1 to i of log of j. All right. Well, j here is totally independent of this loop. Uh, so with respect to that loop, this is a constant. That means we can say this is equal to the summation from j minus 1 to k of log of j times the summation k equals 1 to i of just one. And that summation is nice and easy. i copies of one added together, that is just i. So now that is equal to the summation from j equals one to k of uh, i times the log of j. Now again, i is a constant here, so we can factor that out. That's i times the summation j equals 1 to k of log of j. And in particular, it's a constant with respect to the summation. It's not one of the summation variables or dependent on one of those variables. So this is a sum of log terms. And over here, we've got i. A sum of log terms, you may recognize that from having seen it before. But uh, let's just write it out a little bit. That's log of 1 plus log of 2 plus dot 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 plus log of how high do we get k well oh goodness uh, somewhere up here I changed this to k let's fix that all the way through I I I and this should not be k this should be I okay Sorry, somehow I just changed my upper bound on that summation to i. Let's go back to the code and make sure that that's right. j goes from 1 to i, k goes from 1 to i. So my bounds should always have been from 1 to i. And that all looks good. Now, i is still a constant with respect to this loop. The, the loop goes up to i, but it's j that varies, not i. So, you know, if i is 8, this is 8, this is 8. Doesn't matter that we happen to have 8 here and here. We can still factor out i. So factoring out i was fine, and this is still fine. Okay, now, what is all of this? Well, this is i times, the addition of logs is the log of the product, right? The sum of logs is the log of the product. That's what we used logs for originally. So this is gonna go up to i. So this is actually i times the log of one times two times three times da 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 da, -da times i. And that should look familiar. That is i factorial. Now, asymptotically, it turns out that the log of i factorial is upper and lower bounded by i times the log of i. It is theta of i times the log of i. You don't need to have memorized that. Uh, sorry, you don't need to be able to prove that. Uh, do you need to memorize that? Well, it's, it's a good fact to have on hand, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm going to just say right now that this piece is an element of i times log of i. Oops, I'm sorry. I need to say what kind of bound that is. Of theta i times the log of i. If you want to see how that comes about, uh, well, part of it is, is, not, uh, is not too bad. This uh, i factorial piece, that is less than or equal to i to the i because this is i terms multiplied together, one, two, three, four, da, 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 up to i, and this is i terms multiplied together, but they're all i, so they're all at least as big as this. So for any i larger than zero, uh, this relationship holds, which makes this an upper bound, and so this log i factorial is less than or equal to log of i to the i. Well, the log of i to the i, the log of i to the i, is equal to i times the log of i, and so that gives us an upper bound of i log i. What about a lower bound? 
Well, again, what we can do is we can look back up here, and somewhere in the middle we're going to get up to i over 2, right? And we're going to take that last half of the terms here, and we're going to throw out the earlier terms. Now we're doing a lower bound. Is it okay to throw out these earlier terms? Yeah, we're making the quantity lower by throwing out all those earlier terms. So what we're saying is i factorial is greater than or equal to i factorial effectively divided by i over 2 factorial, which looks uglier than what we're really doing. What we're really doing is saying with the i over 2 biggest terms. And now what we can do is we can say, oh, well, I can take these i over 2 biggest terms and I can make each of them smaller. So I can make this one as small as i over 2. This one as small as i over 2. And everything in between as small as i over 2. So this is now greater than or equal to i over 2 raised to the i over 2. See how I got there? Compare these two here. In this one, we just amped up all of the terms here until they were i. For an upper bound, we were increasing everything. In this one, we cut off half the terms and lowered the other half down to i. I, I like to imagine this visually. Here's all the terms, okay, starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to i. And the first bound we did is kind of like this, raising all the terms up to the largest point throughout. And the second bound we did is kind of like this, lowering the larger half of the terms to half of the amount. So we often do this pattern where we'll, we'll kind of create a shape that is outside of the shape we're interested in and later create a shape that's inside. And this would be our upper bound and this would be our lower bound. So what about this? Well, let's take the log of, this is kind of messy, i over 2 raised to the i over 2. Uh, and that is equal to i over 2 times the log of i over 2. Clearly this 2 is a constant. We're not going to worry about that. So that's i times the log of i over 2. The log of i over 2 is just the log of i minus the log of 2. This part here is also a low order term. So we're going to drop it off and we end up with this log of i times i factor. And so again, this is omega of i log i. And that was all a big distraction. Kind of fun, kind of cool, but what I would probably do right here is just to go straight from log of i factorial to, well, that's in theta of i log i, and so I'm going to say that the whole thing is in theta of this i times that one is i squared log of i.